Okay, folks, it's time to return to our discussion about hang fires in six and a half Creedmoor. The last video was just a couple days ago, so I'm not going to spend a half hour recapping it. If you didn't see the last video where we were talking about hang fires, you should probably go back and watch that to get the full story. But as a quick recap, we were testing out the 140 grain Barnes match burner bullet a couple videos ago. And one of the powders we wanted to test was Vitavori N550. During that video, we ended up having multiple hang fires and actually a couple of misfires with this powder. The other powder we tested was fine, but this guy was giving us hang fires. So in the last video, we took one of the loads that had given us problems and we tested a bunch of different primers to see if changing up primers would make the problem better or worse. It definitely did. We ended up having four primers that caused us hang fire problems, three of which were CCIs. The CCI 450, which is what we've been using almost exclusively in Baker's Half Dozen Creedmoor, this guy gave us hang fire problems. The CCI 400, which is the non-magnum small rifle primer from CCI, and also the CCI BR4. All three of these in the last video we experienced hang fires with. The worst of the bunch though, was this guy, the S&B small rifle primer. So this has been by far our worst performer so far. But we had six primers that did not give us any problems whatsoever. We had two different large rifle primers, the Winchester WLR and the CCI 200. These guys gave us no problem at all, right? We were thinking that the large primer, using large primer brass and large primers would uh, probably fixed the problem and it definitely seemed to. So the, the large primers we tested, no problems. But we also had four small rifle primers that didn't cause us any problems. The Winchester small rifle primer worked just fine. The CCI number 41 worked fine. The Remington seven and a half worked fine. And this guy, the Federal AR small rifle match primer. These four worked okay. So the plan for today's video is to essentially repeat the same test from the last video, except we're going to try and get the ammunition a little bit colder. I suspect that temperature probably has a lot to do with this. So that's what we're going to test today. Now, pretty cold today. Temperature on the range was about 18 degrees Fahrenheit. That's not that much colder than it was in the last video though. So what I want to do, I want to load up five, five shots, with these six primers. And then I wanna put the ammunition in my freezer. And as a bit of a control, I also wanna load up five shots with the CCI 450 that we've used so much, just to kind of verify that we still observe the problem with the CCI 450. So that's basically it. Take these seven primers, load up five shot groups with each of them, and put the rounds in the freezer, try to get them down to about zero degrees Fahrenheit. Now, unfortunately, the 140 grain Barnes match burner that we were using in the last video, I ran out of them. So we're gonna to have to change bullets today. Not the greatest situation, but I think we'll be okay because I've got a very similar bullet. What I ordered was a big 500 pack of the 140 grain Hornady Botel Hollow Point. Their match bullet, the 140 grain Hornady match. Very similar to the Barnes match burner. Here's a picture of them. Hornady on the left, Barnes on the right. The Barnes is just a couple thousandths of an inch longer than the Hornady. You can see the Barnes has got a little bit longer boat tail, but they're still pretty similar bullets. So the hope is that they'll have pretty similar performance. These Hornadies were the cheapest bullets I could find in this style. I got them from Brownells. Uh, it was $121.99. They had free shipping. So it ended up being the best price. Wideners, I think it was $118, but you had to pay for shipping. So it ended up that uh, Brownells was, was, the best, uh, was the best deal. So that gets us these guys for 24 cents a piece. I'm hoping these guys are gonna shoot well. I'm hoping this will be a good, kind of our generic test bullet whenever we're testing something of this like this, where we just need a bullet. So this seemed to fit that bill. We're gonna be doing, you know, I'll be doing probably multiple videos on this bullet specifically, and we're gonna see how accurate it is. But it just seemed like a good bullet to have around for general testing. 
Now I tested this bullet in my gun for you know maximum overall length before we are touching the lands and it looks like 2.895 in that general area is about where it hits the lands. The Barnes was uh, 2.9. So this guy hits the, hits the lands a couple thousand sooner than the Barnes did, but they're very close to one another. But that allowed me to stick with the exact same overall length that we shot in the last video, which is 2.875 inches. We're loading them pretty long and we're using the same charge weight with our Vitavori N550 of 37.5 grains. So long overall length, same charge weight. This does result in a lot of empty case capacity. Or I shouldn't say a lot, because I think maybe I've misled some people. It's like 80% full, something like that. You know, case full of powder. You got powder up to, I don't know, about right there maybe. So it's not like some of the crazy low charges where, you know, you're really dealing with a whole bunch of empty case it's not quite that scenario, but it's still a lot more excess case capacity than we generally like to see. And we're thinking, you know, maybe that's part of why this uh, powder is having a difficult time igniting, which we tested that a little bit in the last video as well, right? So for the charge weights, I just threw them with my RCBS Uniflow powder measure. I actually hadn't touched the settings since the last video. So exact same charge weight, same overall length, but with a slightly different bullet. So these have already been loaded. I've already been on the range. This, uh, I'm just trying to put the video together here. But just like I said, that's what I did. I loaded them up and then I put them in the freezer last night. So they were in the freezer all night and then up until around noon is when I hit the range. So what I did is I would bring my magazine into the house. I would put those five rounds into the magazine and then I would run out and try and shoot them as quickly as possible and all of the remaining rounds went right back in the freezer. So I tried to keep that temperature as consistently cold as I possibly could. Now also, out on the range, I wasn't all that concerned about accuracy today. For one, it was snowing like crazy and I was, uh, visibility wasn't exactly awesome. So I was aiming and you'll, you'll see that the groups today are pretty good, but I tried to have absolutely no more than 10 seconds of delay from the time I closed the bolt until the time I fired the round. I didn't want that round to sit in the chamber and warm up. So I tried to get them fired off as quickly as I possibly could. So let's just run through these guys real quick. Uh, trying to decide whether to just show them all to you or show them to you one group at a time. And I tell you what, I should probably do this one group at a time, but whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to get to the end and actually start talking about the results. So let's just get all the shooting out of the way. I've got it all edited down. It's just over two minutes of shooting. So let's head out to the range, look at all the shots, and then come back and uh, talk about what's going on. That one hung. Hang fire. Misfire. Yep, looks like a good primer strike. Hang fire. Hang fire.
All right, I'll tell you what, first of all, let's talk about accuracy really quick. Holy crap, this was excellent. Like I mentioned, accuracy was the least of my worries today. And we still only had one group over an inch. That was our first one, that 1.425 inch group. All of the rest were under an inch. And we had three of them that were under 0.6 inches. So, so I am really excited to do some more shooting with this bullet and see how it's gonna shoot. It makes me feel a whole lot better about buying a big old box of 500 of these guys. Which buying 500 of a bullet you've never shot is not really the smart thing to do generally. So it looks like hopefully I got lucky here. Hopefully this is gonna be a really good shooting bullet. Now velocities, since we switched bullets, we have to throw our experience from the last video out the window. With the Barnes Match Burner, we were seeing velocity right around 2,500 feet per second. So we're a good bit below that here. I mean, our, our, you know, our small primer groups were between 24, 24 and 2458. So we're 50 to 75 feet per second slower than we were in the last video, but I'm not ready to blame that on the cold since we changed bullets. But now that we've got a big old box of test bullets to play with, now we can probably do some more testing on temperature stability but that's another video that's not really the subject of this guy. Standard deviations all over the place, all the way down to 4.1 feet per second with the Remington 7.5, and, and then all the way up to 39.0 with the Winchester small rifle, the WSR. Very weird. You know, the Federal AR looks pretty decent there at a 13.7, but that's the one we had the misfire on. So that's pretty much it for the groups and velocity. So our CCI 450, which we've seen problems with before, I was surprised we only had one very slight hang fire today, but we did have a hang fire. So once again, it uh, proved itself vulnerable to this problem. The CCI 41, once again, no problems. So at least for the conditions of the last video and this video, it's looking like CCI 41 is gonna be a winner here. I've always been very happy with the performance in 223 with the CCI 41, so it's good to see it perform well. Next was the Winchester WSR. It had one hang fire and it was a pretty gnarly hang fire. It was, a, it was probably the, uh, one of the more obvious ones. So, yep, looks like uh, the Winchester isn't going to quite get it done for us. The Federal AR was the worst we tested today, right? We had two hang fires and then one misfire. So this was a really good performer in the last video, but seems like a little bit colder really took its toll on the Federal AR small rifle match primer. And the round with the uh, with the Federal that didn't go off. I tore it apart and it was just like the ones we've seen in the, in the previous videos. The primer did go off, it absolutely did go off. The powder got clumped up and discolored at the base of the cartridge, all of that crap. So exact same failure we've seen. The primer definitely did go off, it just, it just did not ignite the powder. So same failure. And our last small rifle primer, the Remington 7.5 did awesome. This is also the one that had that crazy 4.1 feet per second standard deviation. Exceptionally good standard deviation at zero degrees. That, that, was pretty, uh, that was pretty wild to see. So at least in the small primer world, after two videos of testing, these are the only two that we have not experienced any hang fires with. Pretty interesting stuff. Now, both of our large uh, primer options work just fine. They were fine in the last video, they were fine in this video. Not surprising, right? I would expect the large primers to work, and they do, so no problems with the two large rifle primers that we've tested here. So the question is, what do we do with the results of this little test? I think at this point, we have got to test some other powders. Vitivore N550 has served us well as a test powder because it, you know, it just, it seems to be very difficult to light for these small rifle primers, but now it's time to take what we've learned and explore some other powders. So I think at this point, you know, we found our two best performers, but taking these primers and testing them with other, other powders probably wouldn't give us much useful feedback. So I think what we need to do is we need to take our worst primer, the S&B primer. In the last video, we got two misfires and like every shot was a hang fire or a misfire. It performed terrible with N550. So I think for the next video, what I wanna do is choose a whole bunch of different powders and I wanna shoot them with S&B primers and see if they have hang fire issues. If they're gonna be difficult to light, this crappy primer should expose it.
it seems like. And when I say crappy, you know, that's a very specific situation where this is crappy. The, these uh, S&B primers have done just fine for us in a lot of other applications, 300 Blackout and 223, they work just fine. But in this application, they've definitely proven to be the worst. I'll tell you what, let me pick out some powders. Okay, I think I got a plan together for the next video. I pulled out 10 different powders, and I think this represents the different options pretty well. First are the three reloader powders, 15, 17, and 26. My understanding is that all three of these are a double base extruded powder. The powder we've been working with, Vitavori N550, is a double base extruded powder. So if these guys give us problems just like N550 did, then maybe we'll be able to say that, yep, it's double base powders that are uh, having the problem. I don't know, we'll see. The next four here are single base extruded powders. We've got H4350 and IMR4350. I've also got Hodgton Varget, and I also wanna shoot Vitavori N160. So it'll be interesting to see whether this guy succeeds where, fi uh, in, where uh, N550 failed. I don't know, we'll see. Now the next three are ball powders. Winchester 760, Hodgton Superformance, and Hodgton H380. Now these ball powders are also double base powders. So I think that gives us a pretty good cross section of the powder market here. The one I wanted to add, but I ended up taking out just due to redundancy is uh, Accurate 4350. This is another single base extruded powder. And this powder was involved in the video where we started seeing problems with Vitavori N550. We were also shooting Accurate 4350 and it didn't have any problems at all. So I don't know. I think its performance will be very similar to IMR 4350. So yeah, I just took it out. I wanted to keep that nice round number of 10. And depending on how interesting the results are from the next video, we might keep going. You know, I've probably got at least five more powders. And if we wanted to stretch it into absurd powders that we're really never gonna shoot in Creedmoor, but they'll work, I could probably come up with another 10 powders to, to, uh, to test. So I think that'll make for a good video. Now, tomorrow is going to be the coldest day of the week. It's gonna be colder tomorrow than it was today. Temperature is gonna be in the teens. So I'm not going to do any of the goofy uh, freezing stuff that I did today. I'm just gonna let them be air temperature, you know, 15 to 18 degrees, I think, is probably where we're gonna to be tomorrow as far as temperature. So I'm gonna rely on the S&B primer to show us which ones are bad. So I think that's where we'll leave it. I've got a bunch of ammo to load up for tomorrow get tomorrow's video started. So I better wrap up this one here today. If you'd like to help support my channel, you can come to patreon.com slash reloading. You can also click on links down in the description of my videos. Those are affiliate links. So if you like the look of how that 140 grain Hornady was shooting today and uh, wanna buy yourself some, I'll have links down in the description and that's a great way to help the channel. So, all right, I'll see you guys tomorrow.